Women are the fastest growing prison population in the world. In the West African country of Sierra Leone, female prisoners have more than doubled in the last three years. It's the legacy of a nation still haunted 11 years on by a brutal civil war, broken institutions, and a legal system where injustice is rife. But in a place where qualified lawyers are scarce, a newly trained crop of paralegals are battling for women's legal rights. These are paralegals Marvel and Victoria. This film follows them into the prisons as they fight for justice for women in conflict with the law and investigates why prison rates among women are soaring. McKaney is a small city in the north of Sierra Leone, undergoing rapid transformation due to the country's mineral mining boom. Hey, Gwen. How you doing? It's also home to young paralegal Victoria. I feel very excited when we get matters discharged in court. I feel very excited when I get people released and bailed from the police cells. I just don't like women buying bars. I just don't like it. Victoria's working day starts with prayers. She's based in the office of her supervisor, the only qualified barrister in the region. There are just 400 lawyers in the entire country. So the 80 or so paralegals, like Victoria, trained by organizations such as the women's rights NGO Advocate, have a vital role. Victoria's job is to educate women about their basic legal and human rights, mediate conflict, and help those who've fallen foul of the law. Grant us to impact willingly to others whatever we possess that is good, to confess truly our faults, to bear with the community the pains and evils which we suffer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, another young paralegal, Marvell, starts her busy day frying breakfast for her family. She lives with her two sisters, mother and young baby. Marvell is nicknamed Small Pepe because under her shy exterior is a firecracker temperament. She has braved death threats while fighting for women's rights. Marvell decided to become a paralegal after herself being falsely accused of shoplifting. Now she spends her days defending women whose illiteracy and low status makes them particularly vulnerable to the ravages of post-war poverty. People who don't have money to hire lawyers, so we need, we need them among us to take to take care, especially the women. They are so brutalized. The women are so suffering because after the war, some women are single parents, some lost their husbands, some lost their children. The scars of a civil war in which 50,000 died remain fresh on society. During the war, they used to cut the hands of people. Maybe they would catch pregnant women, they would split their stomach take out the children out of their stomach. So it was very terrible. They burned the houses, people being in their houses, they put fire on the houses, burn everything. So people, so many people are poor today because of that. People are really suffering. That's why you see people on the street stealing. Women, I'm so surprised if women can steal on the street. They can jog phone, steal, put hand in people's bags, steal their money. Some go on the street, die down for men for cheap, cheap money, just for them to sustain their living. Because poverty is here, there's so much. Marvel is off to work. Bye bye, I'll go. I'll go, I'll come. Bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, yeah, yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Today she's going to Freetown Female Prison to see who's been brought in and who she can help. Uh, 
and when we were going up, she was so quiet. So I, I was very surprised for her to fight, to stand up for the rights of people, especially women. Sometimes I tell her, I tell baby, you have to slow down. She used to tell me that the people are so suppressing our, the women. I want to fight for them. I said, you have to slow down. The struggle for women's rights takes place nationwide. Upcountry, the prison in McKaney is small compared with Freetown, housing just nine inmates. But these women are just as desperate for help. Yes, sir. Victoria has just arrived to educate one of the inmates about her legal rights. But there's been a disturbance. I see an lock. Yes. How that lock there? Victoria is shocked to find that something unusual has taken place. Her client has been locked up in solitary. Eh. Says that. Says that. No, I don't know. Nobody will tell waiting and call for the way prisoner must be able to punish her. Who know they beat you? Who know they do? They lock you. Because they begin them one field say, let me tell you one thing when Englishman say, he say it is cheaper to grow up a child than to repair a man. We are here to keep them in a safe custody, seek their welfare and so. I can honestly talk and say, and they deal fervently with the UN minimum standard rules for the treatment of prisoners. But what you say, you want give me a headache, I they give you a headache. The only headache I they give, I they lock you back in Europe continuously. Once he say show remorse, I go pull you. The conditions at Bikini are better than elsewhere in the country, where there's frequent overcrowding, food shortages and bad water. Limited funding and resources mean poverty remains a problem inside the prison walls. With no one to look after their children outside jail, the young are often locked up with their mothers, a generation whose formative years are spent behind bars. This little girl is suffering from a vaginal infection, but there's limited provision for children. <laughs> The picking is still a discharge. Yes, Prison officers have even been known to pay for medicine from their own pockets. And our mother is also a pregnant woman. <laughs> Victoria's wry humour evaporates at the grim prospects for the future. After some time, the inmate in solitary is released for Victoria to have a word. Thank you for God. Two months, 60 days, if they come on, I just know you go. You go do about your business. But if you make the two months count on to one year, you know, fine. No. The prisoner was in solitary for allegedly insulting a guard. But the matter is not yet finished. What's it like? Can a policeman go cross? To my man, yes. Cross police, they take them to the man. Yes. Let me help you. No, me, I can't go police. Me, I'm my mama, I cross. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I know what I will tell you. Hmm? Anytime we are in prison, officer, I get problem. If I hear a complaint, prisoner, lay complaint to siesta. You see, say, who see not come for come later, huh? Black man. You tell me, yeah. It transpires that the girl has a history of frustration with the authorities. She was jailed after insulting a policewoman who allegedly refused to pay for the soup she was selling. Uh, 
So you just go eat it because you know I'm paying. So we meet up tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, sure. Almost all of the women's crimes are born out of poverty, which is paradoxically a byproduct of Sierra Leone's development. Cities are growing. There are greater divisions between rich and poor, and increased financial pressure on women as breadwinners. Back in Freetown, Marvell is in the women's jail, where there are usually between 70 and 90 inmates, many of whom are sex workers. A group of 11 such women have just been charged by the magistrate and are now awaiting trial. Marvell offers her support. And some of you are so glad for they do this life. But at least where it don't be so, the officer and they go and they arrest me now and close to the way. And we know they know them. So you then they arrest you, then can you go. If you not get 100,000, they left you. And they put you in a cell in four days. Sometimes they put you in one week, they, they say cell and they feel now they left you. That if you don't want to charge you, go to court. They put you there one week, two weeks, so they, they suffer with you. And they clean the, the, the cell and pass through, they go now with the clean and back. And for letting give you a turn out of free money, they back they beg them. Say some of you, they get rash. Yes. They get infection, they, they come and look some of them and they ask you. The All of a sudden, I saw them all we go down the street to get the rash there. Out. So on the rash, then as the inside cell they will get her. So if you see we carry the letter, just because of we not get hundred thousand. But Monday I went to court with Naya. Like I know my husband, so I seem to make a guinea. Now just pray to God, yeah. Many women are driven into sex work by poverty. There are now over six thousand sex workers in Freetown alone. That's 1.4% of the female population. What you make you care? What's your problem? My mommy don't like it. My papa don't like it. When I care, I'm going to drink. Prostitution is not illegal in Sierra Leone. So the police slap the sex workers with the loosely defined charge of loitering. This woman was lucky enough to receive legal representation. Why would an action a court say you plead um accusation that you go loitering around? Why you plead guilty? That lawyer about I say, but no answer say we guilty. Say why? If we deny, when when a pro na 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 problem. In McKinney, Victoria has moved on to do her daily rounds at the police station. She's discovered her client, who was promised bail last week, is still in custody. The woman is accused of stealing money, but before the woman can leave on bail, she must find a surety, someone who will take responsibility for her attending court. Victoria is on the phone to the woman's husband. Hello? Yes, Mr. Good afternoon, sir. Fine. This is Victoria from Advocate. Why are you my rights activist? Yeah. We really need to see you in a police station. The policeman really wants you. We want to see how we go able to build this woman here so today. Okay, thanks. Let me get five minutes to the camp. You say that I'm here allegation. Considering what you be tell me the last thing, why you feel they make the allegation against you now? They say the way we take money run. They say now we the report. Now we call the statement. She's a young boy, young woman. So I'm very worried. I'm too worried. I just want to see her out now. Soon the woman's husband arrives to offer himself a surety. How are you doing, sir? Fine. Ah, my pleasure. Me and Victoria, and I work for Advocate. Now, nah, human rights organization where they help women in conflicts with the law. As Victoria takes her surety to meet the commander, she lightly reminds the investigating officer that in Sierra Leonean law, bail should be granted at no cost. Eh, hey, I'm at. Eh, hey, I'm at. Because I'm at, I say bail not to free. Hmm? I'm at, bail not free. Free? Bail not free, eh? Absolutely. Okay, okay, I feel no more bail not to free. I feel say bail not for pay. You don't say another word, bail is free. What? Bail is free. The situation looks hopeful as they enter the office of the commander, Mr. Machia. 
We really want to make him put this lady as on bill. The money we involved is big. Mm -hmm. And they were yet not suspect there. Mm -hmm. So for guarantee they stay, for say they're not going to jump bill, I make mean, him want a householder for stand as shorty for the problem. Okay. <laughs> want somebody here. Somebody responsible, reliable, and stays in this town. Okay. This is a setback for Victoria and her client. Mr. Mattia has rejected the husband as surety because he doesn't have proof of residence in McKaney. They must find someone local. Back in the Freetown prison, Marvell has heard a disturbing allegation of police corruption in her client's arrest. Well, they said they always follow it. Say so, you, you, we for pay more money. One hundred, hundred grand. One hundred thousand. Yeah, yes. Oh. Wanna pay the money? No. But me copy them pay. Some pay. Some pay. Mm, mm, mm. Me, me, I sent it to them and I know they drag, drag, so I know they get, get money. So, so, so they, they, big, big, they, so they are big, big, so big, when I, when I left free, they are additional, who come, you know, who never get money, they, they say no. Marvell has heard it all before. Allegations of the poorly paid police force extorting money from sex workers by threatening prosecution. Money, business, inside the business. They wonder where they use the footpaths, going this way, going that way. Oh, come here. <coughs> blood, blood. Firstly, so safe. If then inside the motor, guy, the picking. I say, officer, what's your do? What's your do? Wait for all me. Maybe the time is 10 11. 10 11, loyalty. Maybe the picking and keep Then the violence safe for carry them go. Because of money. Money is the problem in Sierra Leone. And there's an even more serious and repeated allegation. If they're not getting money, some of them, because we don't see, now the camera one not get. They the carry them go now behind the station, sex and free, without no condom. Because of the picket that they free, the officer, I don't have money, but you can take this one. At the Central Freetown Police Station, Superintendent for Police and Head of the Legal and Justice Support Department, Mohamed Kamara, denies the allegations made against his men. Wow, but I won't subscribe to that. I wonder how you can negotiate your sex with the time that you have to perform your duty, come back to the station and report to your commander. I don't think that is possible, it's not feasible. Eventually, at the McKaney police station, a local relative of Victoria's client has come to offer herself as surety. Yeah, okay, make her help you. Now, for just uh, show say yeah, this woman not they run. Uh -huh. If you okay. if run, then, then they hold you responsible. Yeah. Yeah. Then go. I will produce her. Um, ah. ah. If you run, then you will hold me. Ah. 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 No fear. Yes. yes. <laughs> you sign for her and show say you know go run. Yeah? So not, not just that, yeah? Okay. Victoria returns to Mr. Mattia with her new surety, confident that she will finally win bail for her client. Sister Mattia, we are back again. But Mr. Mattia is still not satisfied. Yeah. Put yourself in a position, make her do the right thing. Not too. Uh -huh. Make her do the right thing. Yeah. No, Mr. Me, that na me recommendation number one make you take. Just me recommendation. I mean, I know say I know say if the woman be like you know go you know go run away. I will conduct follow up on that, Mr. Mattia. Victoria won't budge, and eventually Mr. Mattia relents. But there is yet another problem. I have now the look for so long. I have to go to the door. I have to go to the door. I have to go to I have to go to the door. 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 I have to go to the 
helping women navigate the obstacles of the criminal justice system is all in a day's work for a paralegal. Finally, Victoria's persistence pays off. What are they to? I'm at. I'm at Snokaits. But the woman, they don't agree now. They say, maybe the woman sign for you. Yeah? I don't tell you, man, anything. If they case and get any other thing, call me. Yeah? I'm going to, I don't tell you. Okay then. Anything, we will talk, yeah? Mm -hmm. Assured of her client's release, she can leave. SS, una thank ya. Bye bye. Oh, me a tire. But while Victoria can go home at the end of a long day, those on the inside are not so lucky. In Freetown Female Prison, Marvell hears another perspective on why prison rates among women are soaring. The police got most of this problem to solve because there are so many, 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 many cases which are not even supposed to be here. So it is a wonder to us how these cases are supposed to be here. Uh, um, this um, um, loyalty and this funny, funny fight, abusive <coughs> language, they're supposed to be settled there at the police station and dissolve everything. But they charge this matter to court, deprive young ladies, put them behind bars for so long a time. And some have kids outside here. How could you imagine this, this case will come up? But we don't know their reason because some of them are looking towards money. So if you don't have money to spend for you to be released there, we are charged to you. As the sun goes down on Freetown Female Prison, the prison nurse leads a spontaneous the devotion. Where they take you out of this place. Oh. The anointing where they take you out of this prison. Hey. Hey. You save your freedom. Amen. 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 Jesus. I said, you save your freedom. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your freedom. Hey, Papa, we thank you. For these women, there remains hope for salvation. You save your freedom. Amen. 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 Efforts to rehabilitate inmates mean they receive literacy and numeracy classes to prepare them for their return to the outside world. This is not the end of my life. I will make it more than now. When I'm outside here, I will do more greater things than before. I just need my freedom. That's so my future is plain and clear. I have a brighter future. That is life after prison. Come on. Since the war, Sierra Leone is developing rapidly, but the institutions have struggled to adapt, and increasing numbers of women are feeling the strain and ending up behind bars. There are efforts to modernize the legal infrastructure with a new Legal Aid Act, which has enshrined the role of paralegals. The paralegal system is now seen as a blueprint for the rest of Africa. The story, though, doesn't end here. Women and mothers are the bedrock of the community and future generations. But as long as they continue to fall foul of the law, what lies ahead may never be freed from the shackles of the past. I will lift my eyes.